morning, everybody. Today is the third day in the month of June, 2022. My name is Heritage Adisa, Markets Analyst at HFM in Nigeria. And as always, we'll check the markets, find out what the overall sentiment is, find out if they provide opportunities, and then how we can take advantage of it. But please, please remember that this is just a communication material. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. It is acknowledged that investments in FX and CFD products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the user is solely responsible and liable. Now, what we have this morning in terms of the overall market environment is still that overall you know, Dow um, environment, um, overall weak environment, overall negative environment, even though it's not as bad as the way we started yesterday, but it's still very much evident. And then um, the major reason for this has been fears of recession, right? Um, that has been in play. Now, I had this written down earlier in the day. I, I said, okay, okay, our markets worry as fears of inflation remain in focus, right? Starting today's trading session, the market environment remains sour, right? As concerns about recession remains dominant, especially after Federal Reserve Chairman um, Jerry Powell um, expressed the Fed's commitment to pull down inflation at all costs, right? So the major focus is pulling down inflation, right? Back down to 2%. It's currently way not of very close to 10%. Right, pulling down to percent that's a long way down. So they have to do that at all costs, even though it risks an economic downturn and highlighting that a recession was certainly a possibility. Now, nobody wants to hear about recession. Nobody wants to go into recession. Recession is bad for business, bad for growth, bad for everything, right? And then if the Fed is saying that, see, you know what? We're going to drag down inflation regardless of what happens to recession and the economic growth, right? Um, or that, that, that clearly is a bad news for equity generally, bad news for businesses generally, um, even negative for the dollar itself, because recently the dollar has been behaving in a cyclical manner where it's been responding positively to good news and negatively to bad news. So there's that to pay attention to. That's one of the major, major, major worries in the market so far. Um, for equities, though, we are still really trading lower to start the day. After yesterday's wide swings, where right, we had so much ups and downs, you know, in yesterday's session. But then if you look at the US futures, you get a general flat, you know, flat five from that particular end. So that, that tells you, you know, um, it's one of those environment, one of those days where you know things are yeah, risk off, yes, but it's just that you know feel that it's not there just yet. But I mean, you can't really go with what we think, it's about what you can see. And what we see right now is a more negative flow in the markets, and that's what's going on. And commodities generally are also lower. Um, fears of recession clearly dampens, you know, uh, markets demand, market participants, traders demand, um, demand generally for commodities because I mean, if there is recession, purchase power drops, right, and then demand also drops as well. So clearly, that there's that, and when demand drops, price also follows. So, so clearly, that's one of the reasons why we also seeing commodity prices lower. Oil prices have also been making fresh lows as well. By right? currently trading very close to six week, you know, um, low around. On a four dollar per barrel level, right? You look at bond, the bond market is also enjoying inflow amidst fears, right? Bonds enjoying that inflow. I mean, the risk of flows, yields are down across board. US 10 years down about 0.83 percent as of time of writing. I mean, you look at what measures of volatility broadly higher across, but all I highlight I highlighting that overall you know, negative environment that we're seeing so far in the markets, right? You look at the currency space so far today, the risk of flows also evident. JPY CHF leading the measures, and then the NZD. That's the problem because I mean, NZD is now somewhere in the middle there amongst the major currencies, amongst the leaders in the major currency space, which is not something that you want to see, especially with commodities down, right? With risk of flows, generally, with equities down. I mean, it's not something you want to see, but it's what we have. So that also puts some form of caution, you know, in our way. Having said that, on the other hand, you have um, the pounds, the pounds also weak amongst, you know, the major FX. Even Aussie is also pressured. And for the Aussie, I mean, iron ore prices are down. Um, quality prices generally are even lower, right? So there's that. Um, we're talking about, we're still battling COVID cases in, in China, 
right? So there's that as well. One of the reasons we're seeing all the downside, but I mean, it's also there. The risk of in itself is even good enough. Equity downside is good enough. So we have that. And then you look at the British pound also pressured. Well, there's been a lot of back and forth with the UK economy recently, but right now we're still seeing that negativity in, you know, um, the British pound. Now, we also had, earlier in the day, we had PMI data. First of all, today is PMI day. Basically, we have PMIs across Europe, um, PMI in the UK, in the US. I mean, we have some PMI numbers for, um eurozone and then they all came out also negative less than expected which really wasn't or is not even helping market sentiment because they're highlighting that you know slow down in expansion for those particular sectors manufacturing and services and then also highlights recession risk and then you look at the ecb right now they're just about to join you know the hiking bandwagon um the hiking circle those that are hiking rates just about to join by next month and now they are already you know, the fears of recession is already up all in their face without even hiking at all, right? And then they're even still battling fragmentation risks as well when it comes to the debt situation in different countries, you know, um, in the Eurozone. Now, all of that, you know, is, is a major worry. Would they still be able to go ahead to hike, hike, and really face inflation head on like they would like to in, at the, mid in the middle of all these fears? Well, we'll have to see. But that just spells a lot of trouble ahead, you know, for the likes of the euro, right? You look at pairing strength against weakness, pounds, Jaco has fallen quite a margin today, over 200 pips already. Um, we'll look at that over the charts in a moment. Um, very close, heading towards 164.5, you know, support level, which is what we want to look out for. AUDJ Pry also has fallen a bit as well in today's session, and then has found some level of support around 93.00 level. And on the calendar today, I already mentioned the PM and PMIs for UK and US, but then later we also have a Fetcher Paul's testimony, right? So there's that also look out for in the session ahead. Now, let's quick dive through charts. Um, first of all, I'm just going to stay here, right, quickly. For the US 500, one of the major, major, major measures of general market sentiment, because I mean, it measures a big chunk of the stock market, particularly the US stock market. And that also gives you a picture of, you know, where things are. Usually when the US um, 500 heads lower, right, um, along with other equities, it shows more of a negative flow in the market, negative environment in the market, and it heads higher as well, more of the positive side. But right now, in today's session, 23rd of June, we're basically just in one spot, circling around this key 3750 level, right? Yes, overall sentiment negative, other equities are cross board negative. But I mean, with the US family trading flat like this, it just says you to also be a bit more cautious in trying to jump into anything that we're seeing right now. I'm, I'm being patient, but I mean, it's just one thing you want to be cautious about. And then it's the same story across all the, you know, um, US bounces, basically just trading, you know, mostly flat today. Today is 23rd of June. Basically, ups, downs, ups, downs, really suck around this um, 11,500 level. That's um, 11,500 level as well in on this particular asset. So that just says to be more and more and more cautious. Yes, all the asset prices are clearly showing that risk of flow, but we as traders must also be very you know, cautious. Now, you want to look at pairing you know, hybrid occurrences, all the strong ones versus the weak ones. For example, you're looking at something like, let's take this off, something like um, pounds versus JPY. Yes, in line with the current environment in the market, you're seeing downside. It's also moved down a lot, down over 230 pips already in today's session, just like four pips away from the total average you know, um, daily range. So, I mean, that's moved quite a lot already. And then where we're trading right now is already at this key, very close to this key support level, 164.5, right? That's also one you want to look out for. Right now, if I wanted to look at this, already at lows like this, I'm not interested. But if I can get a rotation back towards this key 165.5, maybe then I can look up for, for the downside heading for this next key level. Or better still, I'll prefer pull back towards this key 166. I think I prefer this was yesterday's lows, was today's Asian low. But I think this is a better one for me. If I can get a rotation back here, then I can look for, for the target to the downside in today's session. Apart from this, if you look at something like um, AUDJP as well, also headed low as well in today's session. Now we are finding some level of support around 93.00 level. And you look at that level as well, was the lows going back to the 17th of June, as well as the lows going back to the 15th of June, even back as well as the 10th of June there. So clearly you don't want to be caught selling on the lows. We already have a pullback, which will have been interesting for us. We already had a pullback, which was you know a very nice pullback towards the lows going back to 20th, 21st, as well as even 22nd of June. We had it and we pushed lower already. So this probably is gone. But I mean, if you still wanted to look at this, I would really prefer maybe another test 
you know, because what we're trading right now is it's already a low and we've moved quite a margin already into the session. So, I mean, if you can get a pullback, maybe that would be better for us. Uh, but because of the kind of environment that we have, you know, not looking to force anything, you know, is a preferred way for me, you know, to look into it. Now, owing to weaker PMI as well in Europe, I mean, you look at Euro JPY massively falling to the downside, right? I mean, let's just look up a bit, right? And, you know, this forms more like a double top around here, one, two, and then we're seeing that M form coming. So that means that there could be a lot of room, you know, to the downside here. So the fact that we have, you know, that negative flows remaining in the market, you know, central banks still hiking rates, right? Um, there's still that negative recession fears, right? That in itself should support the JPY as a safe haven asset. Yeah, I understand the JPY has some underlying fears, but I mean, this one you want to also have, you know, on your radar. But in terms of today's session, though, I don't think it's something that you want to jump in right now at this low. So you can see it's the same key round number around 142.0. The high is going back to early. What date was this? Uh, this was around the 7th of June. You know, it was also a very nice level around here as well. And now we are there, right? In today's session, though, you know, I wouldn't want to jump in selling at lows like this. I mean, you can see there's also, also an interesting level of resistance, resistance, support, support, support. So, I mean, I would prefer a pullback towards Asian low into this session as well as yesterday's overall body of the candle lows, right? This overall, you know, area here, right? Anything back towards this region, you know, would be better for me. It doesn't mean it can break down and continue lower, but for the fact that we've already moved past the ATR, it's a lot trickier. So I would prefer a pullback so we have more room to the downside. And good enough, we have a very good level here. We can anchor our risk just above the highs of Europe, right? So that would be a way to look at this. We're looking for the downside on this particular one. Um, let's cross over to CHF quickly, and then we'll call it a day for that. Now, the reason why I'm not picking out the dollar is, yes, you know, the recession risks also could be a negative for the dollar, but then risk off could be a positive for the dollar as well. So, I mean, all that just makes it a little bit messy in itself and then i'm not really excited about you know, jumping into any of those moves right now i think you're better off looking for the extreme strength and extreme weakness that would be way 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 better now looking at AUDCHF, well still weakness in this in the aud as well um right now you're looking at where we are what we've done so far today we've broken below yesterday's lows we were testing yesterday's lows that's interesting um although you, you look at where we are trading right now i mean let's just look at that now, that's also an interesting level going back. I mean, there's key lots and lots and lots of reactions around here. And then continue the kind of downside that we've seen over the last couple of days, right? Even coming from late last week, Thursday, they're about. I mean, we could expect some form of pullback. So I'm not really looking to jump in here. It's only with this candle for me here. So what can I like, what would I like to do? What would I like to see? Now, yes, we could look for further downside from here. But in terms of convictions, it's a little bit lower for me from there. The lower commodity prices helps the pair move lower, but if you want to still jump in on this, there's already a pullback towards the 30 minutes, um, 50 moving average. And then you have yesterday's lows retested. You could look for a downside on this particular one. If I was going to take this, that's what I'm going to be looking at. And then you want to look at um, NZD SHF as well. Similar story. Although, you know, with this, net unchanged is where we are right now. Basically, we are almost at flat level, just barely changed 0.12%. So it's just a bit, it's just a tad tricky. By trying to look at this, but I mean, it's not so much of a surprise, or it's not so much, you know, it's not far fetched thinking about this. You know, yesterday is American high, we're already testing it again, and then round number there's 0 0.605, right? We could look for downsides here, but it's just a little bit messy for me. I think I prefer the pound pairs against the safe havens, that's JP and CHF, compared to this other ones. Now, on the calendar today, it's you know, a light one as well, um, in terms of you know, expected data one. Yes, PMIs are expected across board. Um, yeah, so the PMIs across board for Europe, for UK, for even the US, right? But most another important thing will also be Fetcher Powell's testimony. Now, from this, if we have any comments regarding um, recession in terms of they have to hike rates to keep inflation down or to push inflation down, and they wouldn't mind recession or anything that points to the fact that they are expecting recession heavy, that is really not a good, you know, input for risk sentiment or even for risk assets generally. And then you expect all those flows to even continue lower on the back of that. So um, that's it for now. Thank you very much. I um, mean, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. And like always, we'll do our best to help. Thank you and do enjoy the rest of the training session. Right for now.